Jones and Mark will be asking Nick the question. Okay, in your opinion, how does the Agribusiness Center affect the economy of the city of Rainsville? There's no doubt the uh, Agri Center has got an effect on the economy in Rainsville. Uh, opened in uh, September of 10, uh, of course, tax revenue to the city of Rainsville has grown over that time. We've experienced inflation, we've experienced the increase in cost of goods, but the tax revenue is up. Uh, I'm unsure what the effect is. I mentioned in the last forum, and I've talked with the Agri Center board about this. I think it's a good time to bring in a, uh, an economist or, or maybe a graduate student that's looking for a project to study our scenario with our city, with our agri center, and give us a true picture of what the economic impact is. Um, I don't think you can argue that there is an effect. I just, uh, and I think a lot of people, I get this uh, question a lot, I want to know what, uh, what the real effect is. I'm a hard number of person, and, and I'd like to know uh, where we stand on that. The Agri Center has, uh, I think the Agri Center has, has helped the economy of uh, the city of Rainsville. I, I don't know that the, uh, all the reports that we get is, is exactly what they are because we have so many other things in town that helps bring people into town uh, that helps on the economy too. But uh, from the reports that, that, uh, that the Agri Center board has, has put out, um, it, it is a good report. Uh, somewhere around five or six hundred thousand dollars you know a year but but that may not be exactly but it, it is a good report one of the things about the agri center that people may not realize is you know somewhere around 42 weeks out of 52 weeks a year there's an event going on up there and, and those events may be not just one day they may be multiple days and so that's going that's going to put a, a a bunch of people in town for uh, going to the restaurants and going to uh, buy fuel or maybe buy groceries. Some of them spend the night, so they're buying things in town, which in turn uh, creates a positive tax base. And, and the national average on tax, tax base is that, uh, that, that it's going to turn over uh, eight times itself. You know, once you get a dollar worth of tax in town, it's going to turn over about eight times before it actually quits creating uh, dollars in, in the tax revenue. So, I think in the, in, in the overall, it is a good thing for the city of Rainsville. Uh, like he said, uh, the mayor said, you know, we may need to get a study done that's a little bit better so we know exactly. But overall, I think it is a positive for our time. Okay, Jonathan will be asking Marshall Steele a question. Tom, will you please go? Also, uh, while he's doing that, uh, we're going to deem at the two minute mark instead of the, uh, the 90 seconds. And also, questions tonight that we're asking was either submitted or brought by the radio station or Mountain Valley News. If elected, are you willing to seek and accept the legal advice concerning how the duties of your position are to be carried out? Uh, I really don't know what they're getting at here. I mean, I assume it's I'm going to take it for face value. Yes, I would seek and accept legal advice. You know, if I thought it was needed, you know, I wouldn't want to call a lawyer every five minutes to take it on a pretty big bill, but I'll just say yes. Uh, over the past four years, I, I have. Uh, often sought legal opinions when uh, there were issues that I wasn't very clear upon. Now, we are a member of the Alabama League of Municipalities, and the Alabama League of Municipalities has a separate legal division. And when you are a member of that, you can call them or send a correspondence via email and have that question answered at no cost. Um, I, I have their phone number in my phone book, and I, I use it often, and I send them emails often. I think it's uh, advantageous to seek a a legal opinion whenever you're dealing with something that you're not un that you're un unsure of. Now, some of the times the opinion will come back from the League of Municipality that you know this is some waters that we'd rather not venture into. Uh, we would rather you refer this to your uh, city attorney. 
And, and at that point in time, that's where I become somewhat conscious because I do know that once you submit a question to our, um, our legal staff or our attorney, that there is some cost associated with that. So I, I try to be very judicial in those manners. However, the uh, League of Municipalities legal advice is something that I, I seek quite often, and I think it would be in the best interest to all here uh, running, uh, if you are elected, to, to do the same thing, because at a membership, we have that at our discretion, and, and they actually ask that you uh, use that as much as possible, because in the long run, that can prevent a lawsuit um, for the city or of, from the city getting into some sort of uh, legal issue. So, thank you. Dana? Yes, I would welcome the advice of an attorney. I would have to have it because I'm new. I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm a newcomer and I'm just coming up and I'm just learning. I'm eager to learn how that I can serve you. And the only way I can learn that in a legal sense is to be advised by an attorney. So I'm eager to learn how to help you. Tommy, will you please take the questions and let Bill draw, please? <laughs> and Benita will be asking Bill the question. How do you feel the city's government is doing in terms of being transparent and are there changes that you would like to see made regarding that? I think uh, the organization of uh, city government is like most any organization you deal with where you're dealing with people. Uh, communication is good, better communication is even better. In fact, uh, kind of simple that way. There's always room for improvement. Uh, things that we need to do, I think, is uh, we need to get more involved with more feedback from you as citizens and as voters of this city. One way we can do that is to put more things online, more things that are available to you. Another way we can do it, uh, I know that uh, Mayor Jones for the last four years has been having a state of the city address once a year. Uh, some of those are intended pretty good, some are not. But I would think that we need to, maybe on a quarterly basis, have something that we just call a status report. It is a requirement of not only the mayor, but the city council and department heads to come and give a report of what's going on in their particular areas of responsibility. And also give you an opportunity to ask questions, to encourage, or to criticize, as the case may be. That's the way you become more transparent, is get you, the bosses, the taxpayers, involved in what we're doing. And that would be, just off the top of my head, some quick things that I would uh, would mention. I'm sure there are others. I'm going to read what I wrote in here, then I'll explain what I'm talking about. I feel like that the open and the honest government makes us all better in what we know the truth. On my job, I have to be honest with my co-workers, the employees that work for me, and you as a taxpayer to make sure that your dollars stand wisely. And communication is number one. And communication is number two, communication is number three. So if you don't have communication, you're not going to function right. You're not going to do your daily work or weekly work or whatever you deal it with. So, Number one priority on my list is communication and have a peace and harmony. I've been married for 36 years, almost 37. We've never been agree with a lot of stuff, but in the end of the day, we was happy, went to bed, didn't let the sun shine on us, that did not agree with what we was talking about. So <coughs> peace and harmony is number one in our government. And I wish we had it in higher ground, like state and U.S., but unfortunately, the way the country is running right now, a lot of people are not honest with each other. I'm not a politician. I just want to help this town. And 
the town that's been good to me for 41 years. And it's my duty to give back to this town and have an open mind and open communication among us, just like you do with your brothers and sisters. We're all brothers and sisters. We're all cousins. So why not? Okay, Mark is going to ask the mayor candidate, Roger Munkerfeld, will answer first. When there are city-sponsored events, are you in favor of using Rainsville-based businesses over outside businesses when products and services are available within the city of Rainsville? And explain, explain please. I am very in favor of using uh, local businesses. Uh, I have uh, always supported Rainsville very much. I, my, my wife, she'll, she'll vouch for this because, uh, uh, you know, I, I can be somewhere else and I'll, I want to drive back to Rainsville to buy this or, you know, whatever, go to the grocery store. Or and that's just the way I am. I want to support our town with everything that I, I can, whether it be buying groceries in town, uh, buying my diesel fuel in town for my truck, or uh, whatever it is. I, that's just the way I am. And, and using the local businesses, I think it's the right thing to do because they're here. They, they're they're part of their, our chamber. They're 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 part of our town, our city. And I think we need to use them as much as possible. Now I know every once in a while there's something that happens, and we need something or whatever. We have to go out of town for it. That's part of that's just part of it because Rainsville don't have everything you need. But if you've got something here in town or in the city of Rainsville that we can use, and and it's what we need to put on an event or, or whatever, then we need to be using it. That's my stand on that. Nick? I'm absolutely in favor of supporting everything Rainsville. Uh, and I think that's uh, something that all of us here that are already elected officials can vouch for. As far as the city's business, we've always pushed to support Rainsville businesses and Rainsville people first. I tell people all the time, the best way you can help your town is support the people here and the businesses that are in business. Me and my family, we go to church here in Rainsville, we shop, we buy our groceries here in Rainsville. If we need a car battery uh, for a car, we shop here local. Uh, I see Miss Sample sitting back there with s and Wholesale. Me and my wife, about 18 months ago, built a house. We bought a ton of things from Miss Samples. We bought uh, from Johnson, uh, Johnson Lumber. We practice what we preach. We believe that you should shop Rainsville first. So I'm absolutely in favor of supporting Rainsville when at all possible. Okay, Calvin, will you please let Ricky Byron I draw a question and John that will be asking this one. If elected, what will be your priority list from most important to least important from the following? Police department, fire department, sanitation department, road department, ag center, bevel center, library, and parks and recreation. Explain why you set these priorities in each order. I know it's a long list. Well, as I said before, the uh, fire department, the police department, they are a mercy person. They are life over property. It's real simple. We've got to have them because the simple reason is they're saving people's lives. They're protecting our property. They're protecting us as far as the police. We can't. Today's society, the thing that's going on in our countries all over the world today is very scary. So we've got to have a good strong police department. We've got to have a good strong fire department. So those are my first two choices. We've got to stay focused on them. Sewer is a very necessity, vital issue to the city because the simple reason is you can't grow businesses, you can't bring Hardee's, McDonald's, Burger King's, all the change that come to Rainsville, you can't bring them without the sewer. The streets, everybody, the streets is the image of your town. You've got to have good streets. You've got to have sanitation to help keep the city clean. I remember when we first went to the automated system, it was just top to bottom, just 
contract it out. When you contract it out, you lose control. When you lose control, it's hard to get it back. When you can take a truck and go out there and pick up the garbage and clean it up, and you've got a 90-gallon container that can dump it, it don't matter if it's snowing, raining, it don't matter. It picks it up. I know a lot of you have seen back years ago that dogs scattered garbage on the side of the road. Make sure town looked by it. There's not any business that's going to want to come to Rainfall, Alabama with it looking dirty, with us not keeping it clean. So the rest of those, all of those to me, is as important as one. But the main focus should be on the police and fire department because it's black over property. Gary, well, I feel like we've answered the same question all night. Uh, it's a common sense question. Uh, Ricky nailed it. There's no doubt. You would go police and fire your protection. Uh, that's our first job. I mean, the sewer, you got to have infrastructure. You got to have that. That's second. But we got to protect life first. Infrastructure second. The parks and the ball fields, they're awesome as well. And they're needed. Uh, I think somebody mentioned a while ago, if our kids are on the ball fields, they're staying out of trouble. I think it's Coach Mitchell always said, it might have been Coach Mike Ball at school, it always said that out of time is dangerous. So we got to keep our kids a place to stay occupied. So they're important, but life first, infrastructure, and but our kids has always got to be a top priority in the middle of that mix. Sometimes, and, and most of us here are parents, sometimes as parents, we have to learn to mesh all of those things as one. You know, you got to eat, but maybe you got to have a new car to get back and forth to work because yours is wore out. You gotta learn how to mesh all this thing together and get it all done at once. And that's what peace and harmony of the council all working together gets done. Tommy, would you come and let Derek draw a question, please? And Benita will be answer, asking this one. So she's gonna answer this question. <laughs> How do you feel about the Chamber of Commerce receiving $36,000 a year and would you make any changes and explain those changes? I'm okay uh, with the Chamber receiving $36,000 a year uh, as long as, you know, they're using it here to promote our local business. Our local business is what continue to bring recurring revenue here to Rainsville. Uh, so I'm okay with that. If, if we ever veer away from that, then Maybe we might need to renegotiate, but I'm okay with them receiving $36,000 a year. Yeah. I'm oh, Derek. I, I totally agree that they should have $36,000. In some cases, if we had it in our budget, I'd like to give them more because some of y'all know me. I play music out and everything. I know the Freedom Festival was supplied through that money, and that's great. I, I'd like to have something like Fort Payne does, you know, on a monthly basis here in Rainsville because the Freedom Fest does nothing but bring music in, I mean, bring music in, bring money in to the city, you know, so that boosts the economics. And I, well, like I said, I have no problem whatsoever with, with them getting 36000 So, And I'd like to see, like I said, I'd like to see more festivals and stuff and, and uh, more things going on for the people. And that's coming from that money. So, thank you. So we're going to have closing, and you have one minute to close, and we're going to start with uh, Nick Counts. Thanks again uh, for everybody coming, and, and thanks again to Mountain Valley and WBSM. I've enjoyed being here and enjoyed uh, telling you uh, about my vision for Rainsville. Uh, I see growth. I see a lot. I see good days ahead. Uh, but my fear is the growth, if we don't address this growth, and we don't structure it in the way that we want it to be, Rainsville's going to end up to be a, a better community. And I don't think anybody in here wants that. Wants that. A better community is somewhere where people sleep and they go and do other activities elsewhere. I started the conversation about ACE communities. Rainsville is now a certified Alabama community of excellence, and that's something I'm very proud of. And, and through that, we've leveraged off of that and got funding for comprehensive planning. Through comprehensive planning, we can make our city to be the city that we want it to be in 5, 10, and 20 years. 
I want to continue that. I've, I've enjoyed serving you. It's an unbelievable honor and privilege to be the mayor of your hometown, the town that you grew up in. And I want to continue to do that. And so I ask you your support, your prayers, and your vote on August 23rd. Roger. I'd like to thank everyone for being out here tonight. Uh, it's, been a, it's been an absolute pleasure for me for the past uh, 11 and a half years to serve this, this uh, city, uh, the citizens of this town, and the, and the, and the community around us. Uh, you know, as you grow up in, in a small town like this, and, and uh, the, the people that, that helped you do things in town, and you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to have the opportunity to put back into your, into your town like what those people gave you a long time ago. And, 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 and I look back at some of the people that helped me down through the years, and it's it's absolute pleasure that I can, that I get a chance to do this. And, and to be the mayor of, uh, of this town moving forward, uh, I, think it's, I think it's a great pleasure. And I would uh, really appreciate the opportunity. I think I can lead this town with, uh, with structure, uh, leadership, and, and move it forward in the future. Joy. One minute, Joy. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma <laughs> I, I, I would like to tell you what my vision for Rainsville is uh, moving forward. And I, I think that we have a wonderful opportunity of growing an existing revenue stream. Um, in 2015, our sanitation department had total gross receipts of $620,000. The cost associated with that department was only $450,000. We had a net profit of $170,000 in 2015. Uh, this year, our nine-month uh, report from Ms. Betty Hopkins is showing that we're on track to have $190,000 profit. And that's for picking up the sanitation in both Rainsville and Five. Um, my goal, my dream is to expand that revenue stream by growing it to surrounding communities. The majority of our surrounding communities utilize private companies uh, for their sanitation services. And we have the opportunity to go after those and keep that money in the local economy. And it's an easy way to talk to the mayor and council. Uh, over the past year, I have talked to any elected official who will let me talk to them about sanitation. And my goal is to grow that as much as possible. Sorry, Kay. <laughs> That's good. Let, let me have the mic. You, you did good. I think that you, you said a lot of words in 60 seconds. <laughs> well, I'm Tana Pock. I'm not anything special. I'm just a citizen like you are. I've been starving the uh, public for 40 years. I am eager, I am excited, and I'm ready to take that service to a whole new level. I'm not alone. I always have someone watching over me and guiding me. Can y'all hear me? Is that okay? Uh, I, uh, I respect every citizen. I'm proud to be a citizen of Rainsville myself. I am eager to get to know you if I don't already know you. And I'm eager to serve you. And I want you to know that your interests, your needs are my interests and my needs. I just want to be able to serve you and to do what I can for you. I'm eager to learn. I am new. I don't know a lot about what I'm running for, but I'm willing to learn and do all I can to learn. Marshall. I'd like, to, I'd like to thank y'all for coming because it's people like y'all that make the wheels turn. Uh, you know, I listen to my opponent, Mr. Graham, talk about uh, garbage, and I agree with him. We do need to expand it. But where I think we have a fundamental difference is he was like a champion of the bond issue, you know, taking that money out. That was a $1.5 million bond. We took it out on an interest only loan for the first seven years. I mean, is that something you would do in your own personal finance? It doesn't matter how much money you bring in. You know, if it's going out as fast as you're bringing it in. So there, I think, lies the fundamental difference. I mean, do you want somebody that's going to, you know, borrow and spend, or do you want somebody that's going to try to conserve? And I would like to create infrastructure, take that money and create infrastructure. But first of all, we've got to, uh, you know, be fiscally responsible with the money. Thank you. Bill. I've been 
enjoyed tonight. I hope you uh, did as well. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, I learned a lot. I always learn a lot. I uh, sincerely seek your vote in, in, uh, on August 23rd. I want to serve this city on the city council. I have not had that opportunity. I'd like to get that opportunity. I'm uh, not just a, uh, a one issue type person. I'm, uh, uh, I'm interested in all aspects of government. I've visited uh, every place. I, I, I told several people I've been to the, the farmer's market every time it's been open this year, except once. I think I've always bought something there. Uh, so my family roots run deep in this, uh, in this community. Uh, I'm one, Derek, uh, Derek and I are the only two veterans uh, out of this group, and I'm proud to be a veteran. I'm proud to have served my country in, in uh, the Air Force. I'd like to serve this city on the city council. I think I am well-rounded enough in, in the areas. Maybe we didn't have the opportunity not to touch on a lot of other topics that we want to talk about. I would like to talk more about budget and uh, about management and things of that sort. We didn't get that opportunity, but I want to tell you that I'm interested in yeah. And uh, I'd like to get served up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a job interview. That's something that I've never done. In 1980, I went to work for a state and been there 37 years. So I feel like not you interviewing me for this job. Just look at both those and look at the qualifications that we have and what we've done for this town in past four years when I was in. <coughs> and my opponent never have brought anything to this town that I can put the finger on and say, good job. So, I feel like that this interview that we're doing in here is very important that who you wanted to serve in place two in the council. And like I said in the past, I love it, I want to serve again, and good Lord have given me the chance to do it again, so please vote for me. Thanks. Ricky. You know, I have worked with uh, three different mayors, eight different council members, and when you work together, there's not the skies is the limit, but you have to work together, you have to learn to agree, to disagree, you have to have respect for one another. Once you walk out, it's over. That's the way we, that's the way it always worked with us. Now, we didn't always agree. Everybody voted their conviction. We walked on. It never was brought up anymore. But that's what we got to get back to. When you look around and think about Hardee's and McDonald's and Burger King and uh, Industrial Park over there where uh, the uh, Rangeville Church Pew and the Solar Plant and Mayfield, RTI, that's promoting our city. That's growth for our city. That's what enables us to bring industry back to our city. That's what enables us to give us money to make sure that we get fire protection, police protection, road, all that matters. Ricky. That's, that's what's good for you, and that's what's good for us. I ask for your vote. Thank you. Gary? I was making some notes, and if y'all seen me looking at my phone, I was looking at notes, so I went texting her Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to check when we get home. <laughs> yeah, check in. <laughs> Budgeting, marketing, and maintaining equipment, and working with people. That's how number one party started in 2004. We had 20 customers roughly our first year. Now we serve over 500 in three states. We done it with just two people. We done it with newspapers, word of mouth, and working with people. We work with all kinds of people. Some people are nice, some people are not so nice, but we made it happen. We took a business from nothing and made it into a company. We have over 40 rides. We went from not a, a non-existing business to we're one of the largest. That's what I want to do with Rainson. I want to take and get the budgets in place, I want to market what we have, and I want to sell it to the world. Derek? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank WBSM and uh, Mountain Valley uh, for putting this on. 
Uh, I think it's important and uh, to do stuff like this. Uh, for y'all that don't know me, I'm a motivator. Um, I love getting out and helping people. Uh, you know, I want to bring back uh, peace and harmony, of course, and uh, I want to bring back some uh, positive stuff to Grantsville. I'm tired of the negativity. Uh, I'm a positive person. I don't like drama. Uh, I'm all business. I'll always agree, disagree professionally. And, uh, you know, I try to hold myself to a higher standard. Uh, again, uh, I'm a veteran and uh, appreciate bringing that up. But, uh, thank y'all. Uh, thank y'all for coming out. And I want to thank my wife. Uh, you know, she's been so supportive during this. It's hard knocking on doors. Uh, but, but I really enjoy it. And uh, I want to thank my wife. She's been very supportive. And I also want to thank you guys for coming out. And I sure would appreciate y'all's uh, support on the 23rd. Thanks. Jeff. Also, I'd like to thank Mountain Valley and WDSM for having this, and I'd like to thank all y'all for being here. Uh, I think all the candidates that we have can do a good job for this city. And, you know, we've, we've discussed fire, we've discussed police and all this. But one thing that I'm really passionate about is beautification. And the crossing up here is awful. I want the signs gone, I want all that. I want people. I want that manicure where it looks good. I'm in the landscape business, so I'd like to see that look good. I want people to come up through there and go, oh, this, this is beautiful, instead of, oh, they got chicken eggs down here on the right of the yard sale. I, I can't stand that. But I, I really want to put some emphasis on the beautification. <laughs> Sorry, that's, I've seen blue tick hound signs up there. Uh, but anyway, that's, if I get in, I'll, I'd like to put some emphasis on the beautification for the city. <laughs> Sorry, Marnette. <laughs> and, uh, but I would appreciate your vote. And uh, like I said, thank you for being here tonight. Well, that wraps up our uh, forum. I guess we can't beat that blue eggs or whatever that was. But we appreciate all y'all coming out. Fanny eggs. Fanny eggs. We appreciate y'all coming out. It was great. Uh, and we've got a great bunch of people, and you've got a big, hard decision who to vote for. And remember to go out to vote August 23rd. Thank y'all.